Hey, it's Wednesday. That means it's time to delve into medical matters. And gee, whiz, you guys uh, hit us. You gave us a, a clap on the emails. Uh, because last week, um, with Dr. Vicky Skitter, our resident GP, who joins us once again, uh, as usual, this week. Dr. Vicky, nice to have you with us once Thank again. Thank you for having me. Um, we were talking about um, things related to COVID and the diseases that people may have. Um, last week, we were talking about hypertension, and I said we'd also got some questions in about diabetes, and then they started all flooding in. So let's try and get through some of these, uh, doctor. Um, a question from Sue in George. Um, wanting to know what type, uh, what kind of diabetes do you get and how do you diagnose them? Okay, so diabetes is so common. Um, you get diabetes type 1. That uh, normally occurs earlier in life, and that's when your body just doesn't make insulin. Then you need to go on to insulin. That's complicated. You need, I think you need specialist treatment for that. Type 2 diabetes is more common, I would say. And that's normally when your body doesn't respond or doesn't use your insulin properly. So either the pancreas doesn't make enough insulin um, or your body cells are resistant to that. So what happens is your pancreas produces insulin, your sugar comes into the bloodstream, the insulin will be the transporter of sugar from the bloodstream into the cells. If you don't have enough insulin, you're going to have too much sugar in the bloodstream and then you're diabetic, basically. So, okay. so it's really too much sugar in the bloodstream. Basically, which, yes. Which is why the Afrikaans term for it is probably the most descriptive one, Sekersikta. Sekersikta. Yeah. Yeah. So... But now, hang on, hang on. Answer me this then. If, and this is going off the subject a little bit, if um, somebody, for example, has pancreatic cancer, and they have to remove the pancreas. How does the body cope with that? Well, you know, they normally don't use the whole. They, don't, they won't usually remove all of the, the pancreas. pancreas. Yeah. Okay. But um, if you do become deficient in insulin, obviously you can check that, or you then become diabetic if you do, because it doesn't necessarily mean you will. Mm -hmm. Then you treat it. You give the patient insulin. It's complicated a bit, but I mean, you could do that. Okay, right. Sorry, here I am. No, that's fine. I, I hope I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the diagnosis normally is a fasting, well, there's, a, there's about three different tests, you, well, a few, but the fasting blood test, you'll do just the normal sugar levels, mm -hmm. and no, the normal levels is between 3.5 and 5.5, they're about. If your level is above 11 fasting, then you've possibly got diabetes. Then you need to do a glucose tolerance test. And that's not a nice test to do because you go to the lab and they give you this little 75 grams of super sweet glucose to swallow down. Mm -hmm. Yuck. And then they wait two hours and they do your, they call it postprandial blood sugar level. And that should be under 7.8, if I remember correctly. Um, that could diagnose diabetes. And then there's another test called HbA1c. I love that test because it doesn't need to be fasting. So you can have your coffee in the morning and so on. Um, and that will give you an idea what your sugar's done over the past two to three months. Uh, that is uh, in percentage. So under 6% is normal and above 65 is possibly diabetes. So there's quite a few things you could do. Okay. Interesting one, yeah? Um, because also because of where it comes from and Graham uh, who sent us an email from Bury which is evidently near Manchester in the UK um, thank you for the show just wanted to ask the doctor what the symptoms of diabetes are how do you how do you sort of okay. self-diagnose this? Don't self-diagnose anything, please. <laughs> oh, okay, that was your first cup of the day. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the most common ones is frequent urination. You get very thirsty. You would um, have unexplained weight loss 
you'll have increased appetite or could have. You could have um, sores or infections that don't heal properly or get more frequent infections. You can get tingling in your hands and feet or burning or pain. You can move sort of up into the limbs. Um, and the other symptom could be in men, could be impotence. Mm. So there, there's a whole host of different things. Oh, good. So I don't have diabetes. I can vouch for that. I'm happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> Based on your last statement. Um, what are the effects or complications of having diabetes? Okay, so you have to think of heart vessels and heart. So obviously coronary artery disease. We spoke about angina. Mm -hmm. So the effects could be narrowing of the arteries. So you can get heart attacks, strokes, um, those kind of things. You could get nerve damage. And that's where that erectile dysfunction thing comes in, nerve damage. But also the nerve damage you can also get in the gut. So you can get nausea, vomiting, constipation. You can get that. You can also get nerve damage in the eye or the ear. You can get glaucoma. You can get um, cataracts, Oof. infections. As I said, urinary tract infections is quite common as well, especially in females, because they, they urine is sweet. I always say, bugs love sweet urine. But in a year, I go again. With all <laughs> <laughs> no, I was say. Also, um, I think it's also associated with low levels of HDL, which is your good cholesterol. That's also associated with uh, diabetes. It's a whole host of things. I never knew there was a good cholesterol. Yeah, HDL is a good cholesterol. Okay, we'll talk about that at some yeah. stage as well. Let's talk about some good things as well on the medical show. Um, doctor, finally, because we uh, are running out of time, what are the treatments for diabetes? I guess I'm quite passionate about this. I have so many patients that are like pre-diabetic and you can prevent diabetes easily usually if you are overweight once again lose weight if you lose seven to ten percent of your body weight mm -hmm. you should be able to stop the whole process or stop the progression into diabetes you could even reverse it and patients can come off their medication i've seen that before um once again um, healthy lifestyle. So it's very important to have some aerobic exercise, to eat healthy foods before we put you on medication. I often get patients that you put them on medication and then they think, okay, now I can eat what I want. It's so frustrating because diet is the most important thing in diabetes. So obviously there's a host of drugs. There's, there's tablets, there's injectables, but I my go-home message today would be to patients, please change your lifestyle and try and lose that weight, try and get more active, because if you can prevent the disease, it's just awesome. As you know, you talk, about, you, you talk about losing weight. Uh, I'll never forget speaking to a cardiologist once, and he said to me, he said, the biggest problem in middle-aged men, he said, from a heart attack point of view, has got nothing to do with this here. Mm. He said it's got to do with this. this. <laughs> yeah. The central obesity, that's the problem. <laughs> really. Thank you very much, Doctor. Pleasure, Jerry. Dr. Vicky Skitter, who is our resident GP here on Mansfield today. Hopefully that's helped. And uh, we'll catch up with you uh, once again on uh, Medical Matters right here on Mansfield today, next week on Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. And goodbye.